What I'm going to share with you, as previously mentioned, is just some of the research for my upcoming book. Um, its title is self-explanatory, but I'll, in the context of what we're talking about today, go one step further and say it really does focus on contemporary art, um, but the, the discussion today will extend beyond just that. Um, the book is designed to help dealers strategize with the changes in the art market since I wrote the first book, which was about the fundamentals of opening and running a commercial art gallery. Um, one chapter in particular that defines a big part of what has changed since 2008 when I wrote the first book is the chapter, The Rise of the Art Fair. And um, I've read a lot of the literature as well as interviewed some of the directors of the major art fairs in the world as preparation for the book, and that's part of what I'm going to share right now. So since 2002, really, despite the quote you'll see at the top of here from Georgia Adams, the number of art fairs in the world has exploded. And um, there's a number of quotes sort of uh, throughout the presentation that I won't read every one of them because they're really there for flavor, and you can read those yourself. But I think I do want to read this one just to set the tone that the numbers here do tell the story. In 1970, there were just three main events Cologne, Basel, and the Brussels-based Art Actuelle. But the number has mushroomed in the past decade from 68 to two, in 2005 to 189 in 2011. Now, Georgina wrote that in 2012. Uh, I'm currently counting every art fair in the world, and among contemporary fairs only, that's fairs that show contemporary art, I'm up to 220, and I know I haven't counted them all. If I add in the fairs I know exist that don't include contemporary art, the number is very close to 300 at this point. So even from the time that Georgina wrote that, the numbers are continuing to rise, and they are showing no signs of stopping just yet. Um, so why the explosion? Um, I point back to what happened at the NADA Art Fair in Miami in 2002 as the beginning of this sort of notion that the world needed more art fairs. Uh, if you were in Miami in 2002, you know that NADA was a satellite to the Art Basel Miami Beach Fair and a very sort of roughly organized fair by a group of young dealers. It didn't cost very much to participate, but within the four days that the fair took place, those dealers generally sold their booth out one, two, or three times over. And it brought in perhaps more money than they would see selling art through their galleries in the space of six months previous to that. So the perception, as word trickled out that the galleries had just made boatloads of money in that one weekend in Miami, started to change about what an art fair could be, how much it would cost to produce one, who was qualified to organize one. And eventually, more and more people started beginning their own fairs because the demand just exploded. In, uh, I think, 2002, there were roughly 40 to 60 galleries participating in NADA in Miami. The applications for the 2003 fair were in the four or 500 range. So, so many more galleries were immediately interested in participating in that fair. Another thing that happened, though, um, was in response to the recession in 2008. If you'd asked any dealer at the time, when they were looking at how the financial crisis impacted their ability to participate in more fairs, they would have said they expected the number of fairs to start dwindling. We were already having a conversation similar to this one in 2007, 2008. There were so many fairs, and people expected the recession to start knocking them down. But one of the interesting things that happened was a shift in perception of who was responsible for getting collectors to the fairs. One of the people I interviewed for my book is Annette Schoenholzer, the director of New Initiatives for Art Basel. And she said it was sort of a surprise to her when in 2008 and in 2009, galleries started coming to her saying, where are the big collectors that we're used to? They're not here. You have to bring them here. And Basel was saying, well, we produce the fair. We put the best galleries and the best art in the fair. You've always been responsible for bringing the collectors. So, being the fair that they are, Basel, of course, said, okay, this is what you want us to do. We will go out, we'll increase our VIP program, we will do whatever it takes to find the new collectors that are available, as well as make sure that the existing collectors you know and love come to the fair. Uh, one of the things that started to happen, though, as they would reach out, oh, as they would increase their VIP programming, 
they would send every participating gallery a package of VIP cards, and those galleries would send those cards out to all of their VIPs. Well, not surprisingly, some collectors would receive 20 or more <laughs> VIP cards in the mail. And because they had so many extras, they would distribute it to them to their friends. And their friends very often were not VIP collectors. So what you would see in the VIP lounge or at the VIP events were some of the people that the program was targeting, and then a lot of people that it really was never designed for. So the fairs started telling the galleries, you give us your list of collectors, we'll send out the VIP cards so they're not all getting multiple copies. That practice in and of itself shifted a huge amount of the power to the fairs. The fairs now had the quintessential collector's list. They had every person who has a gallery of VIP list in the world. And rather than see art fairs start to dwindle in response to the recession, we started to see their power grow and their numbers grow. Um, the other thing that I think is really critical is that during all this time, from 2002 to 2014, we systematically as dealers started to train collectors that you will see the very newest, the very best, the most exciting work by our artists at the fairs. And even if they were buying them in advance, collectors started getting accustomed to the idea that this is where I purchase art, and this is where I can get an overview of the best art in the world, so why am I spending as much time going around to all the various galleries? Now, some collectors of ours who have been collecting for 30 years will willingly admit that they have not, they've gone more and more to fairs and less and less to the galleries individually because of this event. I'm going to go grab my water. Thank you very much. Okay. So that's the longest I'm going to spend on any one of these slides, but I think that's an important sort of background here. I'm going to kind of fly through the rest of this. So the bottom line in terms of money out, uh, TFAF, the TFAF art market report is generated once a year. It's commissioned by TFAF. It's released in conjunction with their fair in Maastricht, and it's perhaps the best accumulation of data and statistics on the market. It is... It is still considered somewhat controversial because uh, its author, Dr. Clay McAndrew, doesn't um, have what some people consider the strictest methodology. Her sample sizes aren't necessarily what somebody coming from an industry that uses reports like this as part of their business would consider you know, that significant. But it's the best data available, and um, so it does still influence perceptions. And in 2013, she reports that uh, the total amount of money galleries spent participating in art fairs was 1.9 billion euros. And that's money that comes from the galleries only. So uh, if you continue to the money in, the entire art market was estimated to be 47 billion euros in 2013. And dealers reported that 33% of their total sales were made at fairs. So I've done the math, and I hope it's right. The total amount of money galleries sold at fairs, that's not necessarily profit, that's not money they made per se, that's just sales, was close to 16 billion euros. So it's more or less eight euros per dollar they spent to participate in the fairs. I should note that that doesn't say, that doesn't represent the money made by every gallery at every level. The top tier galleries are probably making much more than that. And the lower level galleries, especially in the mid-level, are quite lucky very often if they even break even. So because galleries in the emerging market or the contemporary market generally have a 50-50 split with their artists, a gallery is probably selling twice what they're paying to participate in the fair, but they're only receiving half of that, so it's a one-to-one. -one. Um, this chart is probably hard to read from the back of the room, but it breaks down the sources of sales for galleries as reported in 2013. And you can see 33% is attributable, attributable to fares. If you can't see it, the breakdown is 19% for local fares and 14% for international fares. Uh, very quickly, this is a chart showing where most of the galleries are located. 
you can see cities like Paris, London, New York, uh, Tokyo aren't surprising. That's not surprising that they have the most galleries. This isn't a really finalized chart, but the idea is to show how the number of galleries correlates to the number of fairs that these cities also produce. So a city with a red star on it is a city that has either a lot of fairs or very high profile fairs, very influential fairs. A city with a blue star is a city that's either going up or coming down in terms of the number of fairs or the importance of the fairs they have. An example might be Sao Paulo is coming up, its fairs are gaining in importance. Berlin is going down, it's either losing its fairs or they're not as important as they used to be. Basel is at the bottom by itself. It doesn't have as many galleries as other cities, but it has the most important fairs, arguably. So, despite that sort of geographic dispersion of where the fairs take place, where the sales takes place is pretty isolated to the United States. So the TFAF report in 2013 found that 75% of sales at art fairs take place at fairs in the United States. And if you ask, and they did, excuse me, and the dealers around the world, 91% of them felt that they needed to participate in just as many or more fairs in the United States because of those sales. If you ask galleries in New York, most of them will report that everything else being equal, they'll do their best business in Miami. Miami's a really, I don't know, there's something psychological about it. It's, you know, where the sales happen, we sort of cynically refer to it as shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> the impact of this fair culture, this rise of the art fair on dealers, includes statistics such as some galleries reporting doing 15 fairs a year. That's more than one a month. The impact of that on their gallery practice is they, neither, they need to either bring on more staff, or they themselves are on the road sort of up to 90 days of the year. That's 90 days, they're not in their gallery, they're not with their families, they're not as close as they need to be with their artists. It's um, having both a financial and a personal impact on the dealers. And um, as this quote from the New York Times article about the life on the road for the art dealers illustrates, it's shifting the culture from this genteel practice where you would wait for somebody to come into your gallery and you'd have this leisurely conversation with them to one where you're constantly on the road and everything is happening much more quickly. The impact on artists is probably 10 times worse, in my opinion. At the fair, the top metric of the success for any given artwork is whether it's sold or not. And that starts to influence what artists give their galleries to take to the fairs. They want to be a success. They want the piece at the fair to sell. Um, also, for galleries to get into the best fairs and to please the, co co pardon me, the collectors who come to those fairs, there's an expectation that at every fair you're bringing something new. Um, I've had a number of collectors complain as they were walking around one of the fairs we were participating in, oh, I saw that at this other fair, and I saw that at that gallery, the show they had, and the perception there was that artists can't be doing very well if a piece I saw in the gallery is now at a fair, or if a piece I saw at one fair is now at another fair. And so to sort of create the impression that all of your artists are very successful, as well as to please the collectors who come to the fairs to see something new, Galleries are constantly saying, I need something new. And by saying that, the artists are responding to it. And the, um, even if an artist has a very clear head about it, they're still compartmentalizing their practice. They're making some work specifically for the fairs and the other work that they're compelled to make. The overall impact of this is something that people are now referring to as art fair fatigue. And you'll see a number of articles in the literature about it. There's even clever little articles on how to deal with art fair fatigue, what shoes to wear, what spot to visit beforehand or afterwards, <laughs> etc. Despite art fair fatigue, though, 45% of dealers feel that they will still invest in more fairs internationally. Um, having said that, there is a cultural backlash of sorts where more and more dealers are saying, I want you, the collector, to come to my gallery instead of just meeting me at the fair. A lot of dealers I know are literally saying just that to their collectors. Come visit me. You won't see at the fairs 
what we're doing at the gallery. It's important for you to be involved in the dialogue that's happening in the gallery and for you to come to the gallery. And some galleries in Chelsea and the TFAP report reported that they're doing well enough now in the gallery that they don't see the need to increase the number of fairs they're participating in. But remember that 17% of the the sale is happening is local, and for New Yorkers, well, they're local for the U.S. fairs that are selling the most anyway. So, and that is it.